Let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy S8 once again. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 launch event is happening on March the 29th. So yeah, that's actually next month. So the S8 is almost here. And at the moment, we know quite a lot of details regarding the S8. So we know how it's going to look like. We've actually had a ton of design leaks. We've had a ton of schematics. We've had uh, case leaks. And a ton of sources pointing towards this almost bezel-less, really futuristic looking design of the S8. We also know the exact dimensions of the S8, all the special features that it's going to come with. Uh, most of the camera details and specs, and I've covered everything in my previous Samsung Galaxy S8 videos, including the final design. So, hey everyone, and welcome to the Zenoff Tech. I'm Daniel, and welcome to my leaks and rumors series once again. And in this episode, I want to talk about one of the main features of the Samsung Galaxy S8 that has been rumored to come a lot, and apparently it has been killed. So it's not coming with the S8 anymore. So yeah, this is this is going to be a pretty interesting video and a really interesting topic to talk about. So yeah, enjoy. So you probably know how the Samsung Galaxy S8 is going to look like. So I've done a video, a final design video on the S8, and in that video I talked about uh, the exact dimensions of the S8 that had been leaked, uh, the case leaks, and basically all the design leaks that we had. So yeah, rumors, actual case leaks, and schematics leaks, and even factory leaks, presume factory leaks of the S8, all of them point toward this design for the Samsung Galaxy S8. So yeah, an almost bezel-less design, a really clean and futuristic looking phone. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what do you guys think about this design? I think it looks awesome, and I think this is going to be the best designed phone of 2017, even better looking than the iPhone 8, at least in my opinion. Now, with those really thin bezels, some of you might have noticed that there's actually no home button on the front or no no actual buttons on the front of the phone at all. Okay, so what's going to happen with a home button and what's going to happen with that fingerprint reader then? Well, if you remember from this video, my first leaks and rumors episode on the S8, in that video I actually talked a lot about the home button and basically all the Samsung patents, Samsung has actually applied for a couple of patents involving a home button and a fingerprint reader built into the display assembly. Samsung also has a couple of patents on a three touch display. So similar to what Apple has on the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 7. So display capable of feeling pressure and everything. So the three touch display and the home button and the fingerprint reader built into the display assembly. All of this sounded amazing. Everything sounded amazing until Evan Blass, also known as Eve Leaks, he's one of the most trusted leakers. He posted this image of a presumed factory unit of the S8. So he posted this a few weeks ago, an image showing what's supposedly a factory Samsung Galaxy S8 model. Again, very similar to all of those leaks we've seen before, except for one thing. So if you look closely to the back of the phone, there's actually a strange looking button, so to say, here next to the camera. This strange looking button here next to the camera, that's actually the fingerprint reader. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it means that Samsung, well, Samsung still has those patents for a fingerprint reader and a home button built into the display assembly, but at least from Evans leaks, it doesn't seem that this will be happening with a Samsung Galaxy S8. Now, I didn't want to make a video about this until I was 100% sure that this is a possibility. Having a fingerprint reader on the Samsung Galaxy S8 on the back instead of having it built into the display assembly. So just a few days ago, we've had more leaks confirming just this, the fingerprint reader on the back. So there have been a couple of case leaks coming from Android Pure showing what supposedly an actual Samsung designed Samsung Galaxy S8 case for the S8 and the S8 Plus. So yeah, you can see both the cases and in the middle you can see the camera cutout which is pretty large which I'll be covering in a second. And then on the right you can see a secondary cutout which is not for the flash by the way, but it's yeah, for that fingerprint reader. If you look closely at the case leaks and then at Evan Blass's image, you can see that they're pretty much the same size. So the fingerprint reader, the cutout on the case is pretty much the same size as the actual fingerprint sensor on the actual leaks. Now there are a couple of theories suggesting that the thing on the back that's not actually a fingerprint reader, instead it's what we have on the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So it's basically a heart rate sensor. On the S7 and the S7 Edge, this is also where the flash is located. However, if you look closely, at, uh, at the cases, you can see how large the cutout for the camera is. A lot of reports confirm that the reason for the camera cutout being so large is because the flash is integrated there and apparently the hardware monitor is either integrated there or it has been removed completely. And then yeah, the one on the right is the actual fingerprint sensor. So why is this such a big deal? Having a fingerprint sensor on the back, is that a bad thing? or not. Well, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is definitely not going to be the first phone with a fingerprint reader on the back. There are so many phones with fingerprint readers on the back from HTC, from Huawei, even the LG G5 actually had a fingerprint reader on the back and even this phone, this is the Google Pixel and this one also has a fingerprint reader 
on the back. In the end, this is just a matter of preference. Some people prefer having the fingerprint reader on the front, some prefer having it on the back, and some even prefer having it on the side, like we have on the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium. Yeah, that phone actually has the fingerprint reader on the power button on the side. I think this is what every manufacturer should do, honestly. Well, not every single one of them, just the ones that want to include a fingerprint reader on the back. So the main disadvantage to this is obviously the fact that when you want to unlock your phone, if it's resting flat on the table, you actually have to lift it and then find the fingerprint reader on the back, and that's how you unlock it. I mean, you could always type in your passcode, but if you have a long passcode like I do, that would take a while. Now, a second disadvantage, at least for the S8, this might be a pretty big one for some people. As you can see from the images, the fingerprint sensor is not in the middle as we have on the Google Pixel or the LG G5. It's actually to the left side of the device or to the right side if you look at it from the back. So finding it without looking might take a while to get used to. And when I heard about this happening, I was pretty disappointed because I was, I was really expecting that fingerprint reader to be built into the display assembly, especially since Samsung does have the patents for this. So this might be happening with the Samsung Galaxy S9 or even the Note 8 later this year. However, Samsung is going to make up for this by having a second method of authentication. So that would be the iris scanner like we had on the Note 7. So the iris scanner is returning on the Samsung Galaxy S8. And apparently this is not going to be the exact same iris scanner that we had on the Note 7. So this is actually going to be a slightly improved version. So a slightly faster version and also a more precise version than what we had on the Note 7. Okay, Daniel, well, any new leaks suggesting that this iris scanner on the S8 is actually happening? Well, yeah, there's actually quite a few new leaks on the iris scanner on the S8. So first off, there's quite a few schematics that have been leaked by on leaks, and they do show quite a lot of sensors on the front-facing panel. So as you can see, this, this panel, the front-facing panel, is full of sensors apart from the front-facing camera. Now, if you compare those to the S7 and the Note 7, you can actually see that even the Note 7 uh, did have a lot of sensors on the front, but the S8 presumably has one more sensor than the Note 7. And now, also a few weeks ago, the front-facing panels of the S8 and the S8 Plus have been leaked as well. And I talked about these uh, just a bit in my previous video, but if you take a closer look at those leaks, you can see all of those cutouts for the sensors. So yeah, basically the last two cutouts on the left, those would be for the iris scanner. So yeah, having an iris scanner on the S8 would definitely fix a lot of issues with you having to find the fingerprint reader on the back. Now keep in mind that if you have the phone resting on the table, you would still have to keep your eyes perfectly aligned with the front facing camera or with the iris scanner which means that you would either have to be on top of it, that sounded a bit weird, but yeah, perfectly aligned with the iris scanner, or you would still have to lift it and search for the fingerprint reader on the back. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about all this, having a fingerprint reader on the back? And I've actually added a poll so you can actually vote uh, if you think having a fingerprint reader on the back would be an issue for you or not. But yeah, I would have personally preferred having a fingerprint reader built into the display assembly as rumored to be in the iPhone 8. If you want to know more about the iPhone 8, by the way, check out my iPhone 8 5 amazing new features video. Now going back to the Samsung Galaxy S8, I'm not done with the S8 yet. There's quite a few new leaks that have emerged over the past few days that I want to mention. So the first one, this is a pretty big one. This is coming from Evan Blass, also known as Eve Leaks, once again. And he actually posted an image, a picture of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus logo. So this is how the logo looks. Again, in case some of you might not know, Samsung is going to have two models of the S8, as with the S7 and S6. Uh, but both of them are going to be curved. So the first one is going to be the S8, and the S8 Plus is going to come with a 6.2 inch display. And then the S8 will come with a 5.8 inch display. So 5.8 and 6.2 inches. Now the second thing that I want to talk about, and this is a pretty funny one. So Samsung has activated the support page, the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus support page in India. So I have no idea how this happened, why this happened, but yeah, the support page was active. I'm not sure if it's still active, but it was active for like a few hours a few days ago. So yeah, this was quite interesting. Now also in terms of the displays, again, 5.8 inches and 6.2 on the S8 Plus. Now, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be a 4K display. So one more sources have reported that's not, that it's not going to be a 4K display. It's still going to be a quad HD display, which is pretty disappointing, especially for VR. However, just as I mentioned in my uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 8 rumors video, uh, in that video, I actually talked about the possibility of having not a 4K display, uh, but actually a quad HD display with an RGB matrix. So at the moment on the S7 and S7 Edge, and basically all previous Samsung models, almost all of them, they had a Pentel matrix display. Samsung might actually switch to an RGB matrix with the S8. Again, I covered this more in depth in this video. However, long story short, 
is that if you have an RGB matrix display, you actually have more blue and more red subpixels. So uh, in the end, the display would actually be better for VR than a Pentel matrix based display. Now this hasn't been confirmed yet, but this is also a possibility for the S8. So if this happens, even though we will still have the same resolution as, uh, as on the S7, the display would actually be much better in VR than on the S7 and the S7 Edge. And then we might get a 4K display with the Note 8. So this is definitely going to be one of the key selling points of the Note 8. If this is the case, then the Note 8 would be the ultimate phone for VR. But yeah, keep in mind that if the Note 8 is going to come with a 4K display, that's going to have a Pentel Matrix display, so it's not going to be RGB at 4K. Now, a few more details regarding the display. So apparently the display on the S8 is going to be a DCI-V3 display, so basically the same as we have on the 5K Retina iMac and also the new iPhones and the new iPads. So basically the display would support a much higher color gamut. And besides this, there's also a pretty interesting leak about the display itself. So Evan Blass, again, Evan Blass Eve Leaks, he posted this. Remember when I said that there's no actual home button on the front of the S8? Well, some of you might have noticed that there's no actual Samsung logo in uh, Eve Leaks leaks, or in the case leaks, or in the display leaks. Yeah, there's no actual Samsung logo. So where is the Samsung logo? I would obviously love if Samsung simply put the logo on the back. That would be the best thing to do, especially when it comes to such a clean, modern and futuristic looking design. Even my concept behind me with the logo on the top, even that one looks pretty good, I think. However, according to Eve Leaks, the top of the display is actually going to be hard coded to display the Samsung logo all the time, which yeah, you won't be able to disable that apparently. So yeah, this is most likely happening with the S8. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, someone will find the method of removing that logo and then pretty much everyone would be able to remove the logo. This is most likely going to be done by a routing, but yeah, we'll see in basically two months when the S8 is released. Now, a few more interesting leaks that I want to mention. So when it comes to that 3D touch display, apparently that's being removed as well. So no 3 touch on the Samsung Galaxy S8. At least this is what the latest reports are saying. However, the S8 would come with Android 7.1. So if you have a Google Pixel, uh, you know that on Android 7.1, you actually have some sort of fake 3D touch. So basically, if you hold longer on the icons, you'd get more options for that icon, for that app. So apparently, this is how the S8 would get 3D touch by having Android 7.1. Would you miss 3D touch? Do you think it's going to be a useful feature for you? Let me know in the comments. And then I have a few more details regarding the home button. So previously, I've only talked about the, uh, the fingerprint reader that's going to be on the back. I haven't talked about the actual home button. So where is the home button going to be? So at least here I have some pretty awesome news. So according to some new reports, uh, the home button, the back button and the multitasking button, they're not going to be on screen. They're actually going to be capacitive. So yeah, this is awesome. I personally do not like on screen buttons. So if you take a look at the Google Pixel, uh, the Google Pixel has some insanely large bezels compared to even the S7 Edge, not even to mention the iPhone. Uh, but yeah, if you take a look at the Google Pixel, look at how much space the on-screen buttons occupy. Now, when you're watching a movie or playing a game, for example, uh, those buttons would disappear. However, if you're in Chrome or Gmail and so on, some apps, quite a lot of apps don't support hiding those, those on-screen buttons. So they do take quite a lot of screen real estate. And even when you're watching a movie, when you want to go to the home screen, you have to slide up for the on-screen bar to appear and then tap home and then you will be taken to, to home. So there is one extra action that you need to do to get to the home page. But yeah, those extra one to two seconds, they, they can be annoying and they also add up in time. A few more leaks that I haven't covered in my previous videos. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is going to come with a headphone jack. So with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, some leaks uh, and some rumors previously have suggested that no, it's not going to come with a headphone jack and that the S8 would actually rely on the USB-C connector for uh, supplying audio. However, no, it's actually going to come with a headphone jack. You can see this in pretty much all the new schematics and even the uh, Evan Blast leak. And also in my previous video, in my final Samsung Galaxy S8 design video, uh, some of you have noticed that a lot of a lot of the concepts and a lot of the leaks there uh, actually had a micro USB connector and no, USB-C is coming with the S8. Samsung introduced a USB-C connector with the Note 7 and USB-C is returning with the S8. Finally. And now when it comes to the specs, especially when it comes to the amount of RAM, uh, no, unfortunately we're not going to see 8GB of RAM in the S8. So in the S8, in the 5.8 inch model, we are going to see 4GB of RAM and then 6GB of RAM in the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now this would be for the international market. There's also going to be some versions for the Asian markets and usually uh, for the Asian versions, they, they always have more RAM than the international ones. That's because in China, there's this battle with the amount of RAM and, and basically the, the overall specs. So this might actually happen in 
in Asia. So six gigabytes might happen in Asia for the S8 and then eight gigabytes for the S8 Plus. But again, that would be only for the Asian market. And finally, the last thing that I wanna mention is the software. So TouchWiz on the S8 would be called Grace UX as we had on Note 7, and it's going to be slightly redesigned than the Note 7 version. Now, besides this, as I said before, it's going to come with Android 7.1, and it's actually 7.1.1. Now this is my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and unfortunately I still do not have Android N or uh, Nougat or Nougat. Nougat is basically how we pronounce it in uh, Romanian. But yeah, this is an unlocked S7 Edge and no Android N for me just yet. And there are so many people still having this issue, no Android N under Samsung Galaxy under unlocked models of the S7 and the S7 Edge. So let me know in the comments if any of you want me to make a separate video on how to upgrade to Android N uh, by doing a manual install, a manual flash. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do a tutorial on that. But yeah, this was everything that I wanted to mention in this video. Feel free to check out my previous episodes on the Samsung Galaxy S8, my previous leaks and rumors episodes, and also if you're interested in uh, finding out more about the iPhone 8, I've also done quite a few leaks and rumors episodes on the iPhone 8 as well. If you have enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like to let me know, and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And also, don't forget to enable notifications on my channel uh, so that you're notified as soon as I upload a brand new video. There's quite a lot of issues with the subscription feed, so by enabling that bell, by clicking that bell next to my channel, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Finally, let me know in the comments if you were epic enough to make it until the end of this video by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah, this was pretty much it for this video. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Sinoftech, signing out. Cheers.